Welcome back to WCS America Premier League, where we just had Violet qualifying for the round of 16, which will be happening somewhere next month, somewhere late next month. Can't really reveal the dates just yet, but it's going to be awesome. That event will be here in beautiful Southern California. And since Violet has been working out so much, I saw him at Lone Star Clash. The guy's a beast, man. He's like he's like pro gamer slash model these days. So I, I think he's gonna have a good time here. Violet's probably just gonna lay on the beach for a while, then come back and own some nerds over here in the studio. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to have Violet over here, but Nate, it's time to figure out who is joining Violet out of today's group. Yes, sir. We are in our losers match. Of course, that means it is Oz versus Puck, as Violet was able to complete his comeback versus Puck in the second series. And QXC kind of, uh, you know, he played very, very well in that first series against Oz. Some solid TVP. I think a bit of a surprise with the result. So now we're already going to have uh, one of the one of our Protoss is eliminated. Yeah, it's surprising. If you would have told me in the start of the day that this was going to be a loser's match, I would have been like, ah, no, most likely you're wrong. I think it's going to be the winner's match. Yeah. Also versus Puck. Either way, it should be a lot of fun. Our first map, guys, make a guess. Yeah, you already saw it behind us. Of course, it is going to be played on Frost as us. Representing Planet Key Dynamics is our Red Brothers player spawning on the left top side of this map. Yep, yep. As we, uh, you know, that the hey. proxy factories, man. That's, uh, he's, he's cursing them in his losers match. And he's up against the Blue Protoss player from IVD Gaming, player in the top right. Who would, uh, if he won this, would end up with another one of his many series against QXE. It is Puck. And now it suddenly jumps to my mind. Was it Puck versus Oz that we casted at the WCS America round of 16 in season one? Uh, where we had that game on Frost where Puck was pretty far behind and also went very immortal heavy and Puck secretly tacked up to Storm and suddenly stormed the heck out of all those immortals and made a crazy comeback. I actually don't remember if that was Oz. I think it, who, if it wasn't Oz, who could it have been? Maybe like Frank we, or we had, we had We had quite a, a few Chinese players in as well. I'm yeah, 100% sure. Uh, I think. I, I only looked at his PVZs. I went over all the games. Over yeah, I, I was mostly looking at yeah. the PVZ as well. It's like, well, well I like, played I versus PV Violet, yeah. right? We know PVP, but... Oh, yeah, I, I think it was. So these two have a little bit of history as well. Uh, Puck is a really interesting player in PvP. He's very hard to predict, which, I mean, goes for most Protoss players at this level. You wouldn't be playing in WCS America Premier League at what? this level if you're very predictable. But I think Puck, like, if you ask me, like, how does Puck play Mirror, I have a hard time explaining it. I would say the majority of the time he's going to go for a 2-gate expand build, most of the time with blink openings, but he's also not afraid to throw in a Stargate, throw in a 3-gate aggression. Not that often a 3-gate, but sometimes. Or even uh, try to secretly tag up to DTs. That's something he can do as well. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, the Puck's gateway finished about 15 seconds ahead. He's going to have a Cybernetic score a little bit earlier. Um, what do you make any, make any any anything significant out of this? You got a, you like one supply earlier, you think? Mm, it, it, I'm not sure. I wasn't actually paying attention to when the gates went down. It could have been 11, it could have been 12. Uh, but I don't think that I would be surprised if Puck opens up with three gates. I don't find that very Puck-like. I can see him warping in another gateway. He's still not doing anything. Maybe the Stalker Mother should put in then another gate. We'll see. Maybe it's just a one gate Twilight build. Uh, or it could also be a Stargate opening. Maybe that's why he was getting everything a little bit quicker. It's a Stalker for now. We'll see. It's really hard to uh, make predictions in this phase in the game, especially when it comes to Puck. I feel he's one of the... Protoss plays that's hardest to predict. Like, Oz is definitely a Protoss play that I know loves opening up with some three gateway aggression every now and then. He took his second assimilate, but he took it very late. He's also barely mining any gas from it right now. Yeah. You see a probe heading down, it's going to be a one gate expand. It's yeah, with the sentry for sure. Doesn't really have any aggressive capabilities. Puck Stalker is complete. He has a second one being chrono boosted out. You know, this actually kind of reminds me of the, the openings we saw in, in Huck's PvP. With the, the just the straight the slightly earlier gateway with the two yeah. stalkers out very quickly. And I think yeah, the mothership core as well, which is gonna go scout and now a Twilight Council. This mm -hmm. is very Huck like. Yep, it's very similar to what Huck did. And one gate Twilight this is pretty solid. Um the build from Oz, if he follows this up with a robotics facility, which is in the line of expectation, sometimes the protoss players go crazy and go Stargate. Or he goes Twilight in this case. Now because this is Twilight, I wouldn't actually mind if Buck tries to push the issue pretty hard because he's gonna have Blink quite a bit quicker and he should also have more Stalkers because, hey, his opponent is investing in a Nexus but he can also just play it safe and get a Nexus on his own. I'm very curious to see what Puck decides to do but considering the fact that this Violet is here already, I don't think that Puck is prioritizing expanding right now. I think he wants us to let this expand finish up 
And especially if he sees the Twilight, he's going to be like, cool, so we're doing the same thing, but I'm going to put all my resources into units while you're doing it into an expand and tech. This can work out pretty good for me. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. I like this setup. Uh, Mothership core for Puck. I was like, it's going to get killed by the Stalker. A tad bit unfortunate. Um, does it's really have one of his Stalkers run into the main base of Oz, though. Gets force fielded in. That's a bit un that's a bit unfortunate as well. Yeah, I, I don't like why Puck is, do uh, that Puck is doing this. He just lost two pretty expensive units for almost no reason. Losing the Mothership Core is actually pretty damn important because now if units are on the high ground, he can't, see, uh, he can't shoot at them. So that's even more frustrating. But it's still possible that he makes something work because he still has a little bit of a window where he should have more units because Oz is prioritizing a lot of other things. Photon Overcharge goes down immediately, but the Mothership Core is going to fall as well. So Photon Overcharge at a cost of one stalker, but you also get the Mothership Core is an okay trade for Puck. Oz is even investing in a robotics facility already. I think that Oz is underestimating the amount of units that Puck is going to throw at him real soon. Yeah, he's continuing to warp in stalkers from that pylon by the third base area. Oz is dropped one in the bottom, but Puck is, uh, he's got quite a few stalkers sitting outside of his base. Do you do you really think he can try to push the issue here, though, without yeah. that high ground vision? Uh, well, the high ground vision matters a lot, and that is indeed very unfortunate, but maybe worst case comes to worst that he warps in two sentries and he starts killing this Nexus, and then he might be able to kill a bunch of these probes as well, and then he has an expand on the other side of his map, so I definitely think he wants to push the issue here because he has to do something. If he doesn't push anything, then it's going to be a little tricky. Yeah, and he's starting to attack this Nexus. Uh, you know, Blink is almost done, but it's also going to be done for us. So chasing it on the retreat isn't really going to be much of an option. And well, the Guardian Shield gets popped for Ozzy. Stalkers should be able to trade better, and he's blinking. But as soon as Puck starts to have any type of losses, he can't really escape. But that superior unit count, oh, it's so close. There's the aggressive Blink to grab one more Stalker for Oz. Uh, two more Stalkers on the way right now for Puck. Uh, I'm afraid that it's all just a little too late. I don't think he's going to be able to make this work anymore. Uh, good concave there for Oz as well. Most of his Stalkers are shooting. A few Stalkers from Puck are still running around. Puck still having actually more HP on most of his Stalkers than Oz. He's slightly turning in favor of Oz, but with the reinforcement, uh, I want to say Puck, but with the reinforcements, Oz should be okay over here. And Puck still down like seven workers right now, despite having this expand aid. Seven workers, PvP in this phase in the game. That is absolutely massive. I don't think he's going to be able to make this work anymore. Yeah, Getting comes... a few probes is probably the best thing he can hope for. Yeah, if maybe if he can pick up a few more of these stalkers. The thing is, you know, those extra probes means more income, which means more reinforcing stalkers for Oz. And blinks aggressively onto Puck, trades a stalker for a stalker. And Puck's going to try to get back into that probe production. But, you know, now that he's doing that, it's very easy for Oz to go back into it himself. And we even have a zealot, a pylon, somehow ends up in the main base of Puck. Yeah, very well done here by Puck, immediately warps in two units defensively. So he's going to back off for now, but he's down seven workers. He, that, that is a lot, but you know, I've seen crazier comebacks, especially uh, when it comes to Puck as well. So I think he's definitely capable of still coming back. I wonder if Oz is going to find that other pilot as well. That would definitely sting a little bit. They, they have very similar setups right now, with the only exception that Oz has slightly more units and also has a few more workers, which normally is a pretty big advantage in PvP. And it definitely is, but you know, maybe Oz can, uh, maybe Puck can somehow surprise him, or maybe one time four stalkers can be effective and pick up a few workers. It's going to be hard because they have the exact same setups, but nothing is impossible. Oh, he yeah. doesn't have a Mothership Core either. After he lost it, he never rebuilt it. Mm. So. His observers on top of all the stalkers of Oz in the center of the map. Um, he still has that pylon on the left yeah. side as well. Oh, I guess this observer is gonna. That'll be the end of that. Just a few, few sad moments for Puck. And this actually sucks because right now for us we can see that there is not too much to worry about. But if you're Puck right now, you're worried about what's going on on the outskirts of your bases. So you want to get some pylons. Then you could see, first he wants to build it over here, but then he's like, nah, that's too close because he has more stalkers than me. So you can just shoot it down. Let me put it over here, then at least I'll see it if he blinks in. Uh, but yeah, overall just a very hard position to play from right now if you're Puck. There is not really a right thing to do. The only thing you can hope for is you can just only do or execute what you're supposed to do and do it well. Make sure you build pros, make sure you chrono boost out immortals, and then just hope that your opponent overcommits. And above all, try to scout as well as you possibly can. That's pretty much the only thing you can do right now, because being aggressive, there's just no way, Jose. Uh, not really an option. Actually, look at the position of Oz's stalkers in the top center. I feel like if he tried to throw like even a hallucinated Phoenix to scout, he could blink and catch it. Um, obviously, the most direct path would go right past these stalkers, so I can't imagine he'd be looking for like a warp prism or anything. And that is exactly what's going to happen. Really smart positioning over here by Oz. Uh, 
I, I think that's the yeah, that makes a lot of sense. This is so smart by us, it's gonna make it even harder for Puck to figure out what's going on. Puck sees his hallucinated Phoenix dies immediately, he's gonna send another one. I hope for him he's not gonna send it in the same way. Well, he is. And then he's gonna send a little sub. Oh but my Oz God. again, aware of it, he's playing up his uh, units, and of course, this is not a real Phoenix, so it takes double damage. And this Phoenix is gonna fall as well, and uh, Puck is like, oh, come on, really, man? I like just want to see what's going on. I know it's going to be bad for me regardless. At least just want to peek. At least let me know how bad it all is. He did yeah. even up the work account. It's still a little bit down in army supply, of course, but that's about it. You know, a few good force fields can definitely turn the battle around. Yeah, I mean, look at it. Both players finishing up the Templar Archives, though, and Puck look, immediately Puck. starting research on Psionic Storm. You know, Oz is building a fourth immortal. So there's definitely some potential that he can get Deja a lot done vu. with it. <laughs> it. That would be really silly if that happened like last season and this is going to happen all over again. Back then, Oz had like seven immortals, guys, but they were all really exposed and open. And Fuck just like surprised his opponent completely with Storm. And I'm like pretty damn sure that he was playing against Oz. This time, I think it's going to be a little harder to pull it off. But, you know, it is still possible. Anything could happen. Storm is halfway complete, and from the looks of it, Oz wants to go for a supercharged attack. Oh, this is bad. This third Puck base. Has... Puck's army is oh. out of position. Storm's not done. The uh, Temple are not with the army. So... Uh, oh, this is really bad for Puck. He has no archons fields. with this force either. Force fields will lock him in. Uh, the Stalkers are going to blink back, but there is so much here for Oz. The Time Warps, the Guardian Shields, not enough, and Oz. I, I don't see any way that his army can be stopped at this point. He has so much here charging into the natural. There is nothing to defend right as Storm finishes. So does this game for Puck. GG. And Oz takes himself uh, an early lead in this series. 1-0 now. Really bizarre little follow-up timing. Or I can't really call it a timing, but just a, a moment to attack by Oz. Because he is like he stopped producing pros for a while and he was focusing on a little bit of everything, but uh, he made a third base as well. And I don't think it was a fake; like it's actually something he wanted to uh, start building workers as well. But I think it was mostly just to make sure that Puck was not going up to three bases quicker than he was supposed to. He's like, hey, let me just make sure that you're not going up to three bases yet, which you can't defend because my army is currently stronger than yours. And then suddenly he finds all those units and he's like, oh, cool, I guess we can fight. <laughs> Because if yeah. Puck just sits in a better position, Chrono boots out Storm one more time, maybe drops a Time Warp and a Photon Overcharge, some Force Fields, he's not going to die there. The game still looks kind of grim for him, don't get me wrong, he's not in yeah. a good position. He could have but... given himself a better position yeah. to try to fight it from. Very good point. Our next map is Overgrowth. Two-player map. Um, you know, I guess that makes scouting a bit easier for both of these players, but I don't feel like scouting had a heavy hand in the way that that last series turned out. Uh, I feel it all came down to the very early stage of that game when uh, Puck decides to be aggressive, and I don't mind being aggressive with Blink Stalkers. Like, if it was against a one-gate fast expand Robo, then I think it's the wrong decision when you really try to push the issue, because you're relying on a few good force fuels to zone out the Immortals, otherwise you're just going to die. But against Blink, I can sort of understand it. You're going to have Blink a little bit quicker, you might just be able to make something happen, you might be able to get the damage done that you're looking for, and then expand on the other side of the map. But losing a Stalker and losing a Mothership Core, like, this is not a set of Zerglings that you can get rid of, and yeah. it's like, ah, oh, two Zerglings <laughs> won't make the difference. The Mothership Core, the high ground vision, and one stalk like every stalker is so damn important yeah. and i feel that he almost lost the game already over there you can't you can't just throw those away for sure um and i feel like on this map two player map do you is there anything in particular that you like in pvp that you think favors either of these players styles because it didn't really seem like either of them had different agendas looking at the mid late game stage they were both kind of going for the same setup of course puck was going to get storm but aside from that very very similar yeah, no, they, they played very straight up on Frost, and I think it's going to be more of that on Overgrowth, but once again, it's really hard to, to predict, because there are just a couple of very viable builds right now. Puck can easily throw out a three gateway aggression if he feels it could be successful. I know that Oz is very capable of doing that, as he has done it so many times when I casted his games. This is also a reasonable map to open up with a Stargate, there's nothing wrong with it. Even a one gate Robo, you, I mean, you name it, you can almost do it. Sometimes we see people proxying a Dark Shrine in the corner of this map because it's a relatively large map as well, and the very corners are often not scouted. Like, people just run through them. They yeah. don't actually check every single corner. So um, if I would have to make one prediction right now, I think that Oz is going to switch it up. He showed the fast expanding game one. I think this game he's probably going to go with uh, a double gate opener and then maybe add one more gate and put some wipe gate pressure on, Oz, uh, on Puck. That's what I'm expecting, but it's really hard to say. That'd be cool to see. Always like seeing some uh, some Warp Prism action in PvP. We're just about loaded up and ready uh, to start this game. 
And Puck, you know, this is a tough situation to be in because you are one map away from being eliminated. And this, as this is the round of 32 as well, you kind of have to, you got to grow through the whole gauntlet again, basically, next season if you want to get back into Premier League. So this is this would be a tough loss for either player, for sure. Yeah, it's really hard. If you lose right now, that means you're going to have to go to Challenger again next season. And you never know who you get in Challenger. It might be someone that you think on paper, like, ah, I can have him, but you can also run into guys like Hero or even, you know, Jadong, for instance, yeah. was this year, this season in in uh, Challenger. So, uh, or Bomber as well. It can be very difficult. Either way, game number two is live between Puck and, I was about to say Hero again, uh, Oz, <laughs> of course. Oz currently leading 1-0. Can Puck make sure that, or can Puck bring us the deciding match, the rubber match for the fourth series in a row today? We're about to find out. I would like it. I'd like to see all five all five series today go one, two, two, one. That also be... means that we're avoiding traffic, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> go and go home so late. There's no other cars out there. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, this guy has the chance to do it in the top right position. The the blue Protoss player from IVD Gaming. It is Puck. Puck, formerly of uh, Root, formerly of a team called Convergence, up against, well, Oz, our Red Protoss player, who is up 1-0 in this best of three. And so formerly EG, formerly Fnatic. Any other? Yep. Uh, those are the ones that I remember as well. Yeah. Um, Oz, just, Oz is known as a very strong PvP player. He has always been. He was, of course, that player that in 2011 said, like, I don't know why people say PvP is random. Play against me and I'll show you that it's not random. And then he lost like four tournaments in a row on <laughs> PvP. He lost against, I think, Robbie as well, beat him 2-0 then MLG. Uh, so even Oz struggled in this matchup. But after he found back his rhythm, like I would say the last nine months, he's been really damn solid in this matchup. He has defeated Liquid Hero like a, a silly amount of times. It's sort of like his nemesis. Um, late gas for both, but I guess it's just going to drop double gas at the same time. Yeah. It's a little late than you normally see it, 15. Some, some double gas, 15 supply action. At least that's what Puck is doing. Okay. Us now going to take it. All righty. That all makes sense. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I said War Prism in the start of the game, because you mentioned that. I didn't mean Prism. I'm just expecting, like, standard three gate opening. Uh, but once again, almost anything is pretty viable on this map. There, there isn't really, like, an no awful way to play PvP. I don't think this is the best map to open up with Blink Stalkers, but, you know, you could still say something is possible. And if you open up with Blink and you play against the one gate Robo, it can get a little tricky. But even that is not a bad scenario if you just don't overcommit. So. Yeah, yeah, PvP, anything really is possible. Puck is going for a much earlier probe scout. Oz sending out one now. But, uh, you know, Puck, I don't think there's anything to really look for at this stage, though. Uh, at the very least, he'll confirm that there's nothing missing from his base. <laughs> no, he saw a probe leave at the, amount of, uh, at the point in the game where he expects it to leave, so that is nice. Uh, and I guess he also wants to make sure that like a cybercore didn't finish up a lot quicker or that it's like he's playing as a single gas. There's a single chrono boost going down right now. What is this going to be for us? Of course both players will reveal their attack in the near future and then we will know. No second gate on either side. I'm a tiny bit surprised by that, but hmm. yeah, just straight up stalker mothership core openings. Wondering if we're gonna see the uh, the second stalker from either of these players super fast. Is it gonna be us? Show us your hand. Yes, money oh, for you. He starts the sentry, cancels it, okay, starts is, the robotics facility. Oh, that I find surprising. Out of all the builds that I mentioned, I didn't really expect a one gate robo without a nexus. It's going to be a twilight over here for Puck. Uh, it's a little more in the line of expectation. This is really interesting. I really wonder where he's gonna take this or why is he doing this. A one gate robo in PvP, I don't see it super often. Yeah, this is, and he has a lot of chrono boost available as well. He's been saving up on that nexus Oz, so. Open up with quick robotics facility. Maybe it is War Prism Colossus. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in kidding, guys. Don't in this matchup. Me. Don't flame me, guys. I was kidding. Oh, that would be that'd be really crazy. I remember. What was it like they, they used to be like really popular in PvP? Was the double immortal War mm -hmm. Prism drop? You go uh, out with the so good. with the shotgun of war, of immortals in there. Yeah, it's really good because you two shot workers. For the people who wonder, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, I remember that in Wings of Liberty. Why is no one doing that anymore? The main reason is Photon Overcharge, it just shuts it down because normally it was very hard to actually ever get in range of that war prism and just having a few stalkers was never enough because then he just drops the immortals and he shoots the stalkers down. But right now you actually have something that can put constant damage on the war prison with your photon overcharge. Yeah. That's why it's not very popular anymore. You still see it every now and then, but you're playing with fire. Yeah. Puck's got uh 
his own robotics facility on the way, as well as Blink. And this Nexus on the way for Oz is going to take some pokes as he does try to get out his own Immortals. But, you know, he doesn't really have anything that can really uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this uh, this force just yet. Of course, waiting for the Photon Overcharge once that Nexus completes yeah, he seems like an, a reasonable option. He will have an Immortal. It's basically still like a one-gate Fast Expand Robo, but then it was a one-gate Robo Fast Expand. This one Immortal is, of course, easily strong enough to kill these two Stalkers. Would even be strong enough to kill four stalkers if it really wants to, with a little bit of support. Uh, so Puck sees an immortal, he's probably a little bit confused by that. He's like, oh man. And um, Puck immediately on the other side of the map already dropped his nexus. I really like seeing this because I think if he would try too hard trying to pressure this, it would backfire. And then suddenly he's stuck with all these blink stalkers, which he just really wouldn't be able to do too much with. This is also not a great map to blink in stalks into the main and start sniping probes. Yeah. Kind of hard, there's not really a lot of space uh, to no. jump up a cliff into the main base. Uh, but he did, you know, he took out all the shields on the Nexus, which is nice. Right. Uh, like, with the Mothership Core, he could maybe kill the Immortal. If the Mothership Core could st start shooting at the Immortal as well. The Immortal's <laughs> a little bit exposed. Stark's going to go for it. Yeah, he's managed to get most of the shields off the Immortal. And the Mothership Core is here. He can time warp if it tries to retreat. But he time warps the, the healthier Immortal. His blink is done, but... Puck, I don't think he got what he was quite looking uh, for with this attack. He was a little indecisive there. He, again, we went for the Immortal, then he switched fire, and then suddenly he shot at everything. Miss rallying his Stalkers right now, losing another Blink Stalker. This is not going Puck's way so far. Losing five Stalkers, or four Stalkers and a Mothership Core in this phase in the game. He has to be so careful. Okay, he blinks down the low ground. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so right now, basically all he can do, I think, is just start Chrono boosting out his own Immortals, uh, and just try to turn this into a game. He's only down a single... His army is definitely less impressive. 30 army supply for us against only 14 for Puck. Yeah. Ooh. This is a strong force from Oz. These three immortals will absolutely obliterate any stalkers that get too close. So he's spread well enough that he could try to poke. Really? But even that is going to be quite difficult to do. I really like this army positioning from Oz. He's aware of the fact that Puck right now is not going like absolutely... He loses... Well, Puck losing so many blank stalkers. This is really not going Puck's way at all. Maybe he's afraid of this, uh, his force marching, marching across the map and he's trying trying to buy time for himself. I'm like losing my words over here because I just, I'm just i very surprised by what I'm seeing. And I feel that like what could have been maybe like a, a little bit of a dark scenario but not that bad for Puck. It's just going from bad to worse after he's losing so many stalkers. Take a look at the unit's lost step right now. It's been six stalkers dying and a mothership core for Puck. And uh, started to get very expensive, like way more expensive than it all should have been. Yeah, this is this is starting to get into one of those really weird situations. Uh, the robotics bay is complete for Oz, so we can start to put out Colossi. What what army composition does Puck need to go in to deal with this? Is there like what what do you what do you think would be like one of the things that Puck could really do to try to get himself an edge back in this game. Yeah, I think he's just going to go for Immortal Archon. Um, Immortal Archon is, pretty, is obviously fine, and then maybe eventually, if Oz plays it too passive, he can try to get up to Tempest. But I feel that Puck is trying too hard in making these Blink Stalkers worth it. Like, sometimes it's just not the time and the place for Blink Stalkers to uh, get the investment back. But eventually, you know, there's always a time. There's always something that they can snipe off. It's always something where they can buy time. Or once Oz finally decides to attack, that's when these Blink Stalkers can still be active. But Puck doesn't have to lose so many Stalkers. So what he's doing right now is just making crazy amount of gates and he's starting to get charged, Immortals and Archons. And uh, that makes sense. If Oz overcommits and somehow takes like a terrible fight in the middle of the map, Puck can uh, easily overrun that Colossus army. I have the feeling that Oz wants to attack on two bases, which, you know, if he executes everything well, if he makes sure that he doesn't get caught off guard, if he makes sure that there are no Immortals and Archons close in range of these Colossus and the Colossus are pushing out the damage that they need to, this is going to be a very, very difficult push for Puck to defend. And imagine if he still had like seven or eight Stalkers, he could actually slow that push down so much more or maybe force us to, to leave way more units behind. But right now, if it's just like four Stalkers left behind, uh, Oz is just going to be like lol and wiping a bunch of Zealots, you know, and yeah, don't worry about it. There's not a lot of opportunity if you can't, can't keep the pressure on. That's a very good point. Uh, Storm being researched by Puck again. I, I got to ask how you feel about this because this there's still four mortals, yes, but I don't think it deals very well with the rest of the army. No, I think it's more like a comeback potential right now for Puck. I think he realizes that if he does the exact same thing as his opponent, he's going to have a hard time. He's, we see this army move across the map. There is an observer over here. He sees a few of these units. He also saw that there is an observer on the army. I think it's so important. Uh, it's going to be so important for Puck that he can somehow get in range of these Colossus. Taking a look at the army of Puck right now, 
He has Zalots. Uh, Charge is gonna finish up in time. He has Immortals as well, but if it's just like, if it's a straight up engagement, both armies clashing from one side to the other, there's no way that Puck is going to win. If he can somehow mess with the AI of these three Colossus, there is hope, but I'm not sure how, and how yeah, he's going to this, do that. He has like no warping uh, potential either behind this army. This is looking really, really grim. Can Puck yeah. make it work? More and more Zealots being warped in. Here we go. Guardian Shield pop the first couple storms dropping, but not really seeming to have a crazy impact on this engagement. Another storm hitting some of these immortals, but those three Colossi, Rada, you said it, they're still alive. And the I mean, Puck's armies just evaporated. Photon Overcharge has been activated, but he, do he doesn't have anything to actually kill the army. No, the only thing that could have worked is if he had units coming in from behind, but I'm afraid it's not going to be enough this time for Puck. He's going to lose all of these zealots. The probes are being pulled as well. Most of those are going to fall above all. The Nexus is going to fall. These Immortals being surrounded right now, but it doesn't matter anymore. As GG is called, and Oz takes a convincing 2-0 victory in this PvP series. Yeah, I, I would have said, looking at this group, Puck's PvP, definitely one of the matchups that he would like to avoid playing in this in this group. But unfortunately, not enough to take out Oz, who is now going to go up into the final match of the night in a rematch against QXC, the player that knocked him into that lower match to begin with. And this, uh, this actually could be really interesting to see. QXC remains the American hope of this group. Yeah, I'm a little bit unfortunate for Puck because I, I know that uh, there was a realistic opportunity for Puck to make it out of this group. And I know that he's shown us some fantastic games in WCS America Premier League Season 1. And I felt today that he just hasn't really been able to display it. Like, I know he has it in him. He has shown us so many times. And things just didn't really go his way. Like, he started off strong. He won that first game so convincingly. Then Game 2, maybe a few small errors against Violet. And from that point on, it kind of went from bad to worse. And in this PvP series, it felt like he couldn't really find his rhythm. Uh, a couple of early game errors, but in PvP, every unit is so damn important with certain openings, and especially with the way that Puck tried to play. Like, two or three stalkers can really make the difference in everything that you're trying to set up for the next two, three minutes in the game. And, yeah, his strat was just not able to connect. It's unfortunate. Yeah, a bit sad for Puck, as he's now going to have to go and try to play out a challenger next season in WCS America. But, guys... We've got one more match coming up. Before we go into that, though, I'd just like to say you guys can go check out on the ESL website. You can check out and create your own WCS fantasy team. Pick two players from each region. You can say who's going to make it to the playoffs. And all of the statistics, all the points you earn will be based on their actual performance. And there's like a whole global ladder, fantasy.eslgaming.com slash sc2. I know I have Todd in my team. How about you, Roddy? Uh, I wouldn't take Todd on my team ever. <laughs> just kidding, Johan. Just kidding. Uh, right. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool, man. We got Fantasy WCS now, so that's one of the uh, cool ways. If you're one of those people that's like, I know who's going to win this. I'm that smart guy. Well, you can be that smart guy and win yourself some internet bragging rights. Yeah, that's important. Either way, we are getting ready for our final series of the day. It's going to be a rematch of our first series of the day. Back then, QXC was able to defeat us 2-1, to one, and he played very well that series. It wasn't like a lucky victory either. Even though he caught his opponent off guard a couple of times, QXC looked good and he looked solid. Can he do it again? Well, we're going to find out after our final commercial break of the day.